Hey guys, what's up? By uh, Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next video, and this one is about Town Hall 11. I made a video kind of like this in the past, but this attack strategy has blown up so much at Town Hall 11. I wanted to make a follow-up video talking a little bit more about it, um, how exactly to execute it, what to do, uh, what to avoid, uh, some base building stuff you can do to defend against it. Another follow-up video to the last one I made. Uh, so this is the Immoral Thieves versus North Three Members War. Great war to Immoral Thieves getting the victory. Um, they had a, a, a solid war despite some uh, setbacks at Town Hall 9s especially. So they did a good job uh, getting past that and getting the win by a two-star margin. And uh, yeah, good job to them. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few attacks by these Town Hall 11s that are getting the job done on these dip type attacks. So um, starting off here, I think we have to fast forward a little bit. You can see how quickly the attack actually went once his troops uh, got down. So any minute now. All right, here we go. Uh, drops in a few witches, a bowler, a few bowlers. And the important thing is you drop that giant so the witches have time to spawn their skeletons. That way your bowlers and witches don't get targeted immediately because you want to drop a few bowlers, a few witches on each side. And uh, hopefully the corners of the base will help funnel them in. A few should go to the outside. That's completely fine. I've talked about that in the past. Then typically you're going to have probably two jump spells. It's important that your troops keep moving. Witches aren't good when they're hung up on walls. Um, you want the skeletons to get very far out in front to help defend the witches and the bowlers. So uh, get those jumps down and get them down early rather than later. Um, you can see that last inferno isn't even being connected to, but he has you know a lot of troops in the middle of the base there. He has some witches targeting it. The king just popped the ability there. Typically, something will get that inferno tower taken out. I think in this case, it was the warden that finished it off there. And then look at that, a few balloons. That's a great touch that's often overlooked but that's going to, um, it could make or break the attack. It probably wouldn't have here because you can see how many troops he has left up. One thing to note, look at how this base is set up. Look at the compartments for a second if we just kind of zoom out here. The way he attacked this base was perfect because this line of walls right here and this line of walls right here kept all his troops inside the base. You don't want them spreading out. It's okay to have a few troops go around the outside of the base, but besides that, you want your main force to stay inside the base and stay concentrated. That way the warden's ability is going to be able to take care of everything. Um, the rages will be able to cover everything. I think he even had a heal in there as well. So you want your troops to stay together for the most part. When they get spread out, they get weak. And then um, for these outer kind of layers of the base, you can worry about some of those bowlers and the witches that went on the outside taking care of that, as well as uh, some of the balloons you can bring. So awesome attack to Smiler. Let's move on, take a look at two more. Um, as we back out here, you can see the re war results. I'll probably make another video on this. Um, it's hard because you only have a day to do it, so I am kind of limited in that sense, but I'll do my best to cover this um, as much as possible. At pretty much the same army comp, about 10 witches, 16 bowlers, uh, the heroes, and the spell comp can vary. Some people like bringing the freeze, some people don't. The warden's ability kind of acts as a freeze because it takes away um, what's well, like a huge freeze because it covers pretty much everything. And by the way, take a look at how many uh, or how quickly these attacks go on. I mean, this is 145. He hasn't even dropped a troop right there drops down the quakes um, So that was a I think a solid choice the jump spell wouldn't have been able to reach probably so goes ahead and does the safe quakes also doesn't have to worry about jumping it while he's or dropping the jump while he's kind of in the heat of battle deploying the rest of his troops just gets it done ahead of time it does take an extra spell space that could be used as a rage or a freeze or something but not that big of a deal uh, the base is compact so he should be able to storm right through it once his troops go in has the poison for the cc probably could have just gotten away without having to bring any poisons and bring like another rage or a heal or a freeze or something because there was only that lava hound but he might not have known that i believe this was a fresh hit um so troops going around the outside taking out some of these archer towers and stuff as usual but the main force is pretty concentrated around that dark elixir storage which is good that's what you want to happen i think the warden's ability was good there um people can use it too early but you want to use it right as your troops start to kind of be getting targeted your witches are at risk that way it basically allows you know gives you four seconds for all the skeletons to spawn get out in front for everything to kind of regroup take out defenses right in that um make or break moment that's when you want to use the warden's ability i know it's important to use it on you know 
as many troops as possible to get the most value, but don't use it too early. That's probably the mistake we see is people trying to use it too early because they want to affect so many troops, but you want to wait until it's actually going to be keeping troops up because the critical moment's typically not going to come until you get near that back end Inferno Tower, um, but make sure you do have troops left up so it's not being wasted really. But, but don't do it too early. There's kind of that sweet spot in the middle that you might be able to kind of uh, recognize after watching a few of these attacks, hopefully. Let's move on to the next one. That was also an attack by Smiler. So good war. They were four for five on their dip attacks, which is an awesome um, awesome batting average there when you're getting, what's that, 80% of your dip attacks uh, three-starred. That'll typically win the war, and it did in this case. So... Uh, look at that, 16 bowlers, 10 witches. That seems to be the golden ratio right there. Um, and it's funny because I think the actual golden ratio is 1.6 to 1. So that is kind of funny. I think that's what it is. If you look that up, the actual golden ratio, it is 1.6 to 1. So it's funny how it's 16 to 10 here. Uh, but yeah, 16 bowlers, 10 witches. I forget what's in the CC on this one. Sometimes people bring a golem. Sometimes people just bring like more bowlers or something. But anyway, that's what you want to do. That one giant, just a tank. Give your witches long enough to make some skeletons. Uh, be able to kind of get their grasp on that side of the base. From there, you're good. Um, CC4 of Giants, actually, that's what most people used, I think, the last two attacks, or at least one of them. I haven't been paying that close of attention to that specific aspect, but the, the Giants in the CC allow you to have those Inferno spots uh, soaked up. That way, you don't have to bring a freeze for that first Inferno, because they're all going to be soaked up on the Giants. Um, your Witches and your Bowlers won't have to worry about it. Maybe a little bit early, probably could have waited another two, second or two on the Warden's ability, because right here, it would have been nice to have it. Um, he kind of probably used it a tiny bit too early, but not that big of a deal. Um, even though there is a, a ideal time to use it, still better early than late is is how I would think of it. So it's a very delicate balance. But if you if you're not exactly sure, I would say do it early. Um, doing it late can be catastrophic. All your troops can die. Whereas doing it early, you might lose a little bit of value, but at least you can still have a shot. Uh, but anyway, he has a ton of troops left up. I'm as far as defending this. Uh, I was able to, I think, to defend one on my base, and maybe I'll show that in a different video. Might as well. I don't care if my base is shown. I'll probably make a new one. Um, but there's certain things you can do. A Tesla farm is a good idea. Because uh, if you put it on the right side of the base, um, away from where they're attacking, that can uh, really take out some witches or some boulders towards the end of the attack. You can do a troll Tesla. I think that's huge because we're seeing so many dip attacks. A troll Tesla can make them waste their time and make them run out of time if they don't get to it in time. Um, actually, Goblin Slayer didn't bring a archer for that builder's hat, so that could have been... Uh, a bad situation but there was so much time left over it didn't matter but a troll test that can work out especially if right when they drop like their witches they get directly targeted by that troll tesla if it's in the right corner or you know other there's other things you can do i would go back and watch my original video i talked a little bit more about defense and that but i probably will show my own base at some point and talk about how i defended uh, one of these attacks in the war uh the genesis was in the potluck um, that just happened. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys learned something. For those of you Town Hall 11s, be sure to share it with your clan mates uh, if you have some Town Hall 11s. Should be helpful for them. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.